Well, my name is Jacob Cummings. On iRacing, it's Jake Cummings. Funny story behind that is that if there's more than one in one person's name, you get assigned a different number at the end of your name. And I didn't want a two on the end of my name, so so I, I had them change it to Jake Cummings. So I guess I'm, I'm Jake now. I represent Wingate University in the college series right now. I'm majoring in marketing. Favorite NASCAR track? Probably Watkins Glen that we're on right now. Uh, Charlotte, the road was really fun as well. But uh, it doesn't really have that, quite have that nostalgic value because it's so new. So in terms of NASCAR tracks, this place, like I was saying, I played NASCAR games a lot when I was a, a early teenager, and that was back when I had the PlayStation 3. And then I finally got an Xbox One for my 15th birthday, I think it was. So I got F1 2016 on the Xbox, and that's when I finally got a racing wheel and everything, and it was the coolest thing in the world, and and that's when I finally got a racing wheel and everything, and it was the coolest thing in the world, and then after some time, I, I did that for three years, three or four years actually, and uh, eventually I just kind of got tired of it, like mid or late 2020, and I was just thinking to myself, I got all this money I've saved up from working for years and years, and I've always looked at iRacing as something I really wanted to do, so I just kind of bit the bullet as a sort of uh, graduation present. I I got my associate's degree uh, last spring and I was it was the same day I was coming back. You know what, I was going to wait until closer to my birthday, but I kind of want it now. So I just, you know, bought it then and picked it up uh, at the Best Buy nearby. So that was that was a cool day. Here I am 20 years old and I finally do. So that was how I got into iRacing and it's just a really cool platform to be honest. In iRacing or in general? Because uh, back in uh, on the F1 games, I made uh, the eSports Playoffs series back in 2019, and it's a crazy story, I might have to tell you one day, but, but since then, the college series uh, has definitely been a big achievement. There was a lot of hype for it, and it didn't, didn't go the way I wanted it to in the race, but the fact that there are other opportunities is, uh, is pretty special, and I'm still pretty new. I, I haven't even been on here a year yet. I think only in the past four or five months of I've been doing the iRacing special events and all that jazz. So doing endurance racing has been really fun. I mean, in terms of iRacing, I suppose it would be the college series, uh, but I'm definitely looking to do a lot more. Uh, that's got to be my man, Clint Boyer. Uh, retired Cup Series driver. He's uh, broadcasting for Fox now. He's, he's such a cool guy. I kind of, I don't model myself after him per se, but I, I definitely look up to him because he's such, he's such a character and such a great personality. I, I started liking him back in 2009 or 10 or something when my dad, uh, he showed me him on the TV. It was a race at Talladega and he showed it to me because the, his sponsor was, was his job. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I like this guy now. And it, I was my first exposure to, to watching real life motorsport and everything. I'd been in the car my whole life that I never knew about. I never knew they did it for a living anywhere, uh, racing uh, and everything. So that was that was cool to know that. And then I took a break for a few years, came back in 2014, I think, when I was 12. And I was rooting for him for so, so long. And I uh, I nearly met him in 2018 when I went to the Roval race uh, over here in Charlotte. Man, I, I would love to meet him one day. And he doesn't do iRacing a whole lot, uh, but... <laughs> But I'd love to to rate, maybe do go karts or be on here I, or anything. I would I would do anything just to just to meet the men. There's a few things I suppose on iRacing. There's the 12 hours of Sebring coming up, as well as the next round of the College Series. The cool thing was that after that eNASCAR race, I think it was about a, a few days, about a week or so later. Later, I got I got a message on Twitter from a, a university that was in my state, but about three hours from where I live, up in the mountains, and they knew that that was in the same state relative and I they knew I wasn't about to graduate because I'm a junior right now so they were saying I was wondering if you want to learn about the program at, at uh, this university and maybe see about getting you an esports scholarship and I was thinking to myself that would be amazing so it's, it was really cool to see that just making that one race and putting a lot of effort and uh, sweat into that was led to so much even the race didn't go my way so that opens up a whole lot more opportunities if that's ever if that's the thing I do come in this fall uh, for more goals and aspirations and things like that and on a more vague note for racing in general I've always since I was 12 I've always wanted to be a race car driver of sorts but never really had any sort of outlet but now that I'm you know older and I have the means to actually do things like this it's it's a stepping stone to maybe one day when I'm a bit older as well and have more money to sort of you know just uh, throw a Hail Mary and try to you know buy a race a race used uh, modified car or street stock and you know William Byron he, he did it but from going to the from the iRacing Coke series the now he's he's a fairly successful NASCAR Cup Series driver so I've always been curious about how 
esports and just you know being on things like iRacing actually correlates to the real world and I think that would be great to, to do one day even if it doesn't work out just to say that I did it and you know just be at peace with that even if it doesn't work because my ultimate goal is to make something of it I mean as long as I try I think I'd be really happy oh boy it's it's always interesting for the road courses because it's nothing like the the ovals or Daytona like we did but basically it's it's interesting while we're talking, uh, doing this as well, it's always focusing about uh, those little mini inputs you do on the steering wheel while you're trying to go straight, which you know you do on the highway as well, and throttle modulation, you can see uh, I almost hit the wall there a little bit, and so you have to tell like, oh okay, if I stay on the gas I'm going to hit the wall, so let me back off a little bit, and then you kind of have to, to look but also feel with your steering wheel how the car is responding to whatever car controls you are doing as we go over the bumps quite, a, quite heavily over there, and take a trip through the grass. Um, it's interesting to know how different gears affect your car's handling. We're in second going through here. If you were in third, you would not get as good a turn in, but it'd also feel heavier and be more stable. So it's really interesting knowing that balance. And I've noticed in, in uh, a lot of these NASCAR road courses, there aren't good braking points to look at on the track. So it all goes after feel. So you're just sort of looking around like, oh, this looks about where I'm supposed to brake. So you kind of just throw it in there and. Hope it, hope it uh, comes out the other end all right.